In order to see what we've become, it's important to see where we've come from. In 2018, Crazy Rich Asians made news for being the first Hollywood film released featuring a majority Asian cast telling a contemporary Asian American story since 1993's The Joy Luck Club. Which itself made news for being the first Hollywood film released featuring a majority Asian cast telling a contemporary Asian American storyline since 1961. And that movie was the first of its kind. Upon learning this, it was shocking that in nearly 60 years, an ethnicity that makes up 6% of the United States population had less movies made about them than the Planet of the Apes. Damn you all to hell! So it makes one wonder, what was the first movie? And is it worth watching? This is 1961's Flower Drum Song. The movie tells the story of an illegal immigrant, her words, not mine, and that's the nice term she uses. Don't worry, we'll get back to that. Who travels to San Francisco's Chinatown to fulfill an arranged marriage with a nightclub owner. But the nightclub owner enjoys the American lifestyle, and would prefer to break tradition, so he tries to get her to fall in love with the eldest son of another family, who in turn wants to marry the nightclub star act, who he doesn't know is a nightclub performer. Yeah, it's a little complicated. Along the way, the older and younger generation lament that the other doesn't understand them, and both sides resist and compromise to both their world's practices. Bucks, tomatoes, wooden chopsticks. What are we going to do about the other generation? How will we ever communicate without communication? Oh right! <laughs> this is a musical. Probably should have led with that. And not just any musical. A Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, creators of such classics as The Sound of Music, Oklahoma, The King and I, and South Pacific. The latter two of which had interesting interpretations of Asians and Pacific Islanders. When I shall kneel, you shall kneel, etc., etc., etc. But this movie is not from a position of hate. Yes, they may be two white guys, but they are trying to tell a story of an interesting and underrepresented group. And for 1961, or 1958 when the stage musical was made, this is pretty progressive for the time. Besides, it's not like they say anything really out there. Personally, I never fully approve of the old custom of drowning daughters. Oh, Jesus. Progressive for the time, progressive for the time, progressive for the time. Say something in Irish. Ellen Gobla. You know what? Let's take a look at another classic movie from the same year. So while there are definitely some eyebrow-raising moments, consider them with grains of salt, which must be taken to appreciate what it was. And since it's a Rodgers and Hammerstein movie, there are some decent songs, including the often covered I enjoy being a girl. The titular flower drum song, A Hundred Million Miracles. A hundred media miracles. And Chop Suey. To be fair, the actual lyrics are pretty out there. Hula hoops and nuclear war, Dr. Salk and Shajika Bohr. Though this does bring up an elephant in the room. Not all, but a few of the actors' voices were dubbed. This is especially noticeable during I Enjoy Being a Girl, which can be a tad distracting. 821 Jefferson Street. When I have a brand new hairdo. But not quite as distracting as the multiple dance sequences which, while lovely to watch, do bring the movie to a halt if you're not expecting them. There is one moment of true time capsule racism in the movie, and it's at the end of the film. So if you want to avoid spoilers or see it for yourself, skip to the indicated timestamp on the screen right now. Giving it a sec, and... Here we go. In the end, the marriage between main character May and the nightclub owner Sammy is going ahead despite them being in love with other people and desperately wanting to marry them instead. All seems lost until May watches TV, which gives her an idea. Well, now, don't tell me that you held up the Wells Fargo stage at Eagle Rock. No, no. I came into this country illegally across the Rio Grande. I am a wetback. I cannot marry you, son. My back is wet. This do-sex Latina works, 
and the wedding is off. My son cannot marry a wetback. But not to fear, it turns into a double wedding, and the flower drum song guides us to the end. And we're back. So, is this movie worth checking out? I'd say yes. Sure, it's got its warts, like Chinese characters being portrayed by Japanese actors, which is still a step up from Mickey Rooney. But as a stepping stone movie, it's pretty decent. Heck, it was nominated for five Academy Awards, though it didn't win any. Which is weird, because this is a pretty unique movie. I mean, how many adaptations of famous Broadway musicals detailing the American immigrant experience could have possibly come out in 61? I like to be in America! Oh. Regardless, the performances are good, the songs are out there, and it's an interesting window into how a culture was, or at least was viewed, at the time. And it's still very pressing today as people continue to struggle to find their own identity and define what it means to be an American. Plus it has some pretty funny and retrospect moments. And now we're going to make the hills of San Francisco rock with gaiety. <laughs> so do yourself a favor. Keep your biases on your Facebook and head over to Amazon to check out Flower Drum Song. Invite the other generation. What are we going to do about the other generation? And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button in the lower right or a like. And if you agreed or disagreed, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, stay safe and happy trekking through the Amazon. We could take over the training of the other generation. We know we could improve them quite a lot. But they will never let us. They stay the way they met us. And so we're simply stuck with what we've got. We can't improve them. The kids are simply stuck with what they got.